just this morning, I was talking to a bar mitzvah boy, one of many who I teach regularly every week, almost every day. I teach bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah kids. I've been doing it for about 25 years, maybe more. And in trying to encourage them to put on tefillin, we talk about tefillin, we talk about the value of the mitzvah, the kavana, the intent, what it brings to our to our day, how it synchronizes the mind, the heart, and the body. That's the general understanding, and also that it's a mitzvah, mainly, it's a mitzvah, etc. But this morning, and the last few bar mitzvah boys, I tried a different tactic, approach. I was wondering if it was okay. I said to him, his name is David, I said, David, you're turning 13, or you're 13. We have this mitzvah that your grandparents, and great grandparents, and great great grandparents all the way for thousands of years have been doing. They've been wrapping tefillin every day for 4,000 years. From Avram Avinu, if you want to do it exactly traditionally, 3,334 years since the first Shavuos, since we got the mitzvah from Toh. From Moshe on Mount Sinai, don't break the chain. You have a lineage, you have a tradition. Don't be the weakest link in this chain, in this glorious Jewish heritage chain that you have. Is it okay to guilt someone into doing a mitzvah? That was my question, aside from the validity of the argument and the truth and the beauty of it all. So, I was thinking about that and on the way back from Shul today, I heard a, Torah, a thought from the Rebbe that kind of answered my question. It was on this week's Torah portion. Hashgacha Pratis, is what we call Divine Providence. So, this week's Parsha is Naso. Naso means lift up, raise, count. In the, one of the many mitzvahs of this parsha is the mitzvah of Nazir. Nazir is a Nazarite, someone who separated, the word Nazir means to separate oneself. So he separated himself from the crowd, from the Jewish people, in certain manners and in certain activities. Most commonly known for the growing of the hair, leaving the hair grow long, not touching it, during the time of the Nizirut, not drinking wine or grape juice or anything that comes from grapes. Also, it is prohibited for a Nazir to become impure, defiled by a, by a person who passed away or by something dead, etc. Afterwards, they bring a carbon, a sacrifice. So, this Nazir, the word Nazir means to separate oneself. The Rebbe talks about this and asks, about the separation. What is the, the, what is the, the theme of the separation? Is it a holy separation? Is it a separation for a different reason? And he goes on to explain. And he says, people can separate the most commonly known Nazir, the most uh, arguably the most famous Nazir was Shimshon Hagibor, Samson the strongest man who ever lived. And with about Samson, the Rambam, Maimonides, and Rashi debate about his status of Nazirut, of the Nazir. Was he doing it for holy purposes? Because he was a, trying to act holier than others because God told him to? Or was he separating himself for different reasons? That's a dispute or a debate between the Rashi and the Rambam. And the Rebbe talks about this and expands the idea of Nazir really to our day-to-day -day life, to me and you, and makes it relevant. And he says that a person, the word Kiddusha, holiness, Kodesh, Kaddish, Kiddush, it's all, these are all words, the word means holy. Holy in Hebrew actually means separate. It means separate and above raised above, different than the rest. So Nazir, 
and really synonymous with Kedusha. Nazir and Nazarite, synonymous with holy, with Kedusha. So the Rebbe says when a person separates himself, why does he do that? Could be two categories, which are reasons, two modes of separation. One is because a person wants to be holier, or a person is holier and they're separate, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And another one is because a person is concerned that they may fall into a trap, so they separate themselves out of concern. So one is holy Kedusha, is like I'm special and therefore I'm different in a positive way, and another one is that I'm concerned and therefore I'm different, kind of focusing on the negative side. And the Rebbe goes on to explain that in the approaches, in the life approaches of how we are supposed to, our perspective about ourselves in Judaism, I'm a Jew and I'm proud, says the Rebbe. There are two ways to look at it. One way is the he brings a quote from the Musar movement, and the idea is that there's a Mishnah that says, Asu siyag la Torah. You should, in the Pirkei Avot, said, make a fence around the Torah. There's a fence around the Torah. Our rabbis did it. It's part of our tradition that when the Torah, the biblical prohibition, is to, let's say, not do business on Shabbos, so the rabbis created a fence around that and said, don't touch money, because if you'll touch money, you might end up doing business. The biblical prohibition is to write, not to write on Shabbos. So they said, let's create this siyag, this gate, this fence around the Torah called muktzah. Muktzah means it's designated for weekday use, and don't touch a pencil or a pen, because you might come to use it for writing. So that's a gate, a fence around the Torah. And that idea is also very much in line with what the Rambam Maimonides says about a person, any person who has uh, the deos and the laws of character traits and knowledge and understanding and the ways that we should conduct ourselves. But the Rambam says that if somebody finds himself, his character, in one extreme, in a, fur, in a specific extreme that's negative, instead of going back to the center road, they should go all the way to the opposite extreme in the positive and overdo it, like overkill. And then, when they're after they're there for a while, they can come back to the center and be normal again. So we have this idea of making a fence around the Torah in our traditional. And the Rebbe quotes it in the Musar movement where there's a saying about uh, for a person to be able to resist and refrain from a serious prohibition, from a biblical prohibition, they first need to practice disciplining themselves on smaller infractions 99 times. So he says if you do it 99 times and on the little things, you exercise your discipline muscle 99 times on little things, on things that are not so significant, like maybe not eating what we just want to eat just because it's there in front of us, etc. Then when it comes to a serious thing and it's difficult for us, we'll be able to overcome. That's what the Rebbe says about the Musar uh, approach, which is obviously valid when it's necessary. And the Rebbe says that our Hasidic approach is a different one. It's a different road. It's taking the high road and literally, and saying that I am special and I am different and it's not becoming of me to do something. Special and different. Sounds like non-PC words today. They're straight there in the Torah. The Rabbi quoted a Pasuk that Hashem said, Hashem wrote in the Torah, Moshe said, Viniflinu an Iva Amcha. And we are separated. I and your nation, we're different than the rest of the world. They know it. The question is if we know it, that we're different. And the Rebbe goes on to say that a Jew has this incredible lineage and ancestry 
that goes back for thousands of years. This is where Avram, the children of Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. And as a person thinks into that, and we should remind ourselves and others about that, about our ancestry, and say, as pasnished for a person to do, a person of my stature, for the son or the daughter of kings to act in a certain way, or as past to act in a certain way. The Rebbe quoted, he said that the previous Rebbe quoted the Rebbe Maharash, his grandfather, um, a very famously known Yiddish quote, the word past. Past means it's befitting or not befitting. Past nicht means it's not befitting. It's pastia, it is befitting. So the Rebbe says our, our ancestry should help us, our holy lineage should help us know that this is something, this activity, this thought, this speech, this action, is past, yeah, this is past for a Yid, it is past for a Jew to do something like this. Or, or is past nicht for a Jew to do something like this. The Rebbe says we have a rich, very rich ancestry. It's not necessarily rich in finances, but it's rich in spirit and tradition. And that should govern us. The governing thought should be, is this what is befitting for me as a Jew or not? The Rebbe said that somebody may ask, why should I be different than the rest of the world in my business, in my way, in my conducting uh, my external affairs? Everybody's lying and cheating and stealing. Why should I be different? The Rebbe says that that same person that says that, sometimes you might find that they have pictures, paintings, or pictures of their grandparents or great-grandparents on the wall. And you ask them, who's this person? The long white beard, or this woman who is modestly dressed with her hair covered. And the person might reminisce nostalgically and say, hey, I know this is my great-grandfather, and, and oh, he was such a special old man, he was a rub, he was a shochet, he was a mohel, he was in, in Poland, in Russia, in Europe, and I remember seeing him as a child, and when he would sit at the Shabbos table, it was, he was like a king, my grandmother was like a queen, and they'd put me on their lap and teach me stories of the Torah, and it was so beautiful. Says the Rebbe, don't leave it on the wall. Take it off the wall, bring it into your heart, bring it into your actions. This answered my question when today, this morning, at the Minyan at Chabad, after the Minyan, I was talking to this Bar Mitzvah boy and telling him, your ancestors have been doing this for thousands of years. Don't break the chain. And I was wondering, is that okay? And I just got my answer. What do you think? God bless you. This is running commentary number 200. Baruch Hashem. I pray to God. I'm able to continue running, learning, sharing, inspiring, and becoming inspired. And you too. God bless you.